Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Um, if you followed us for a while, you know uh, we're huge fans of uh, finding natural ways to support and improve your life. And according to the EPA, about like we spend about 87% of our lives inside the buildings and especially our household. And at Million Marker, we encourage people to improve their air quality and also reduce their toxic chemical exposures by detecting their sources of these exposures and also reducing them uh, with cleaner alternatives. Uh, another excellent way for supporting your lifestyle is through feng shui. And feng shui is an ancient Chinese art um, of arranging buildings, uh, objects, um, furniture, and in a space, um, in an environment to achieve like harmony um, and balance. So we're going to talk about this really exciting topic today with our guest, um, Alejandra Brady. And Alejandra Brady is the author of What Should I Feng Shui Today? And so we're really excited to learn about this topic. I see you. Hi, hi, Alejandra. Hello, Jenna. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm so I'm... excited to talk about this, like this topic. It's so fun, isn't it? I mean, and then we always end up going down rabbit holes because there's just so much to talk about. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for taking the time. But tell us a little bit about, you know, your background and like how you became a, a, a feng shui expert. Sure. Um, well, I call myself a feng shui practitioner. Other people choose to call me an expert, but, uh, you know, I, I just call myself a practitioner. Um, I actually found feng shui because I've been doing interior design for almost 20 years now. Um, and I found that, you know, once you've been doing something for long enough, you should be pretty good at it. So I've been able to make homes look beautiful for, for many years, you know, as anybody who's in their craft for a certain amount of time can do. But it wasn't feeling aligned. And I had this one particular client who is actually the one who is, I, I blame her for my entire life. <laughs> I blame her for the crystal collections. I blame her for the book and everything else because she was into all this way before I even knew what it was. And I was doing her home and she was married to a professional baseball player. So I was doing a beautiful home. You know, it's very well appointed. And she called me one day and she said, you know, this feng shui expert will come to both our homes if you want a consultation. Uh, and she won't charge us travel time if she does both our consultations on the same day because she's coming from Naples, Florida. I said, okay, why not? Well, we'd already started to talk about crystals and little things here and there. And I've always felt energy. My book, which is not about feng shui, it is actually a memoir. Um, whoever reads it will see that i mean ever since i was a young child i felt energy but i didn't have the language to put to what was happening to me mm -hmm. so the feng shui consultant came her name is karen rock carter and i adore her and you know we're walking through my house and i'm taking notes furiously <laughs> and about 10 minutes in she stopped and she looked at me and she said you know you're going to be doing this as a living and seriously my initial reaction was looking at my watch going, TikTok lady, you're super expensive. Just tell me what I need to do so I can do it, you know? And I just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I completely ignored her and just kind of said, keep, keep going. So she came through, she made the suggestions. Um, I implemented them it, for about a month. I started working on things and we, I decided to work on the master bedroom first. And a month in my husband who had been very closed off to the idea of this happening, you know, the guys are like, just another way for you to spend more money you know no one else is going to tell you become we have to redo it all over again it's not enough that you redo it every few years you know so um but I did what she suggested he came to me about a month in and he goes what room do you want to do next I go really he goes I feel such a difference in our home and we've been married 32 years so this was about five years ago so still 27 years we've been together for many many years decades and he's like I really feel a difference in our home and I'm like, really? You want to keep going? Because let's keep going. So slowly <laughs> but surely, I was my own guinea pig. We redid our entire house. And then I finally looked at him and I go, I've got to do it. Don't I? He goes, you've got to do it. So I called her and I said, hey, remember me? <laughs> you know, you said that uh, I should be doing this. So my question to you is now, will you take me on as a student? And she said, yes. And I closed down my design business. I also, in the meantime, also unexpectedly had... 
uh, cervical fusion. So I have a plate with six screws in my neck. So I had to recover. And now I had a fresh bedroom to recover in. It's so interesting the way the universe works, isn't it? And, uh, you know, I was in a neck brace, so I couldn't do anything for weeks on end. So to have that vibrant energy and have my surroundings actually help me recover was everything. So as soon as I was recovered and off all the drugs that they put you on, I started studying. And a year later, I got my certification under her. And I flew to a couple of places and shadowed behind her as well. And now when she, she's coming to Florida next week and she stays with me. So we've become really great friends. And uh, she's just been a blessing in my life. But yeah, that's that's how it all started. It just one thing led to the other. And, you know, opening the door to feng shui made me curious about meditation. Mm -hmm. Opening the door to start meditating. Suddenly I get a message in the middle of a meditation that I have to write a book. And again, just like I said to her, I said, no, thank you. Not interested. No interest in writing a book. Here we are with the best selling <laughs> book four years later. You know, and then, you know, and that's how it happens. And that's how the feng shui deck came now. So now when I get told to do something, I'm just like, okay, fine. <laughs> you know, let's go do it. Um, and I've become so much more in tune when I receive messages. And, and, you know, because my home vibrates at such a high level mm -hmm. that it allows all those things to come through for me. So hopefully that wasn't too long of an explanation. But, you know, that's just the way it works. <laughs> yeah, now I combine both. So I do my design I, with the energy. I love it. Yeah, I, so I to me, the best compliment is when someone comes into a space that I've worked on is, oh my God, it feels amazing in here. Mm -hmm. You know, I know it looks good. At this point in time, I know it looks mm -hmm. good. But when someone says, oh, it feels so good in here, I'm like, thank you. That's that's what I wanted to hear, that you feel it, you know? So yeah. I love this. I feel like a, some many people who are kind of opposed or not accepting it because they feel that science cannot explain. But I'm like, okay, even if science cannot explain, it doesn't mean it's not there. So, Well, yeah, I think that people confuse it with a lot of things. So I usually like to start conversations by telling people what feng shui is not. Um, it is not witchcraft. It is not a belief system. It is not a religion. It is not anti-religion. <laughs> you know, it is, it is just a way to work with your environment in tangible and intangible ways so that what's already around you is amplified to be beneficial to you. You know, the word feng means wind, the word shui means water. Mm -hmm. Wind translates to energy, water translates to flowing prosperity. So we're just trying to work with the environment to bring you energy and prosperity into your life and the people who live in the space with you or work. I do a lot of commercial properties too. So why not? Why wouldn't you want to work with it? It's free, you know, it's like, do I want the energy working against me or with me? Hmm. <laughs> you, know, you know, those commercials on TV where they pick like Shaq for the basketball team, the kid goes, I'll pick him. It's like, yeah, I'll, I'll choose to work with the energy. Why wouldn't I? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. You actually just answered my question because I was going to ask you to explain phone trade. So you explained it and uh, what, also explained what phone trade is not. So uh, my next question is, you also mentioned chi in some of your posts. So, you know, what is Qi explain to us and like how, what's its role in, in feng shui? So Qi a lot of times is also used intermixed with the word energy. Qi is basically the life force that flows through us and through everything around us. You know, I mean, nothing is actually solid. You know, everything is actually a whole bunch of little teeny tiny molecules and whatever you want to call it. I'm not the science person. I'm creative. <laughs> Um, but, you know, so there's always movement. So there's always energy in everything. Every object has energy in it. So the way that we work with chi is we are inviting fresh, vibrant chi into your home. And if it's a home with a lot of stagnation, then what we're trying to do is change that, you know, let out the old that isn't working and bring in the fresh that is working and will be beneficial to you. So what are the type of uh, energies in feng shui and how they could impact, different type could impact us as individuals? So there's three types of energies kind of that we're working with all the time. We are working with universal energy, you know, just like the seas and the oceans are affected by the moon and the tides. It, same with us. We are affected by universal energy. There's no way around it. Um, feng shui focuses a lot, obviously, on environmental, your environment you know, things that you can control, which I think is wonderful. And then I also like to work with people's um, personal G. You know, I think that you have to kind of combine all three, your mind, your body, and your soul. You, it all comes together. I work a lot with 
you know, for, for me working with personal chi means what are you putting on your body? What products are you putting on your body? What food are you putting in your mouth? What cleaners are you cleaning your house with? So it's not just about I'm moving around the furniture. I look at all that stuff, especially if somebody's reached out to me with health issues. Yeah. I mean, before I move a piece of furniture, I go right to what are you using? What's going on? You know, because energy and feng shui, you know, in feng shui, we kind of say what's closest to you affects you the most. So, and I know you guys work with this all the time, and this is what you talk about. You know, what you put in your mouth is going to affect you the most. What you put on your body, Absolutely. what you sleep on, you know, your bed, your mattress, your sheets, what you wear, all of, and then from there you go out to your house, to your office, you know, to the places that you spend the most time, and then it grows exponentially from there. But it it all matters, and it's all very interconnected. So I don't break them up. I just kind of take them all into account. I love it. And then you also mentioned there's like, you know, positive and negative energy. So how do room can have these positive or negative energies? Well, positive is always what we're trying to achieve, right? <laughs> uh, auspicious, wonderful, positive. You know, you go in and you feel tingly when you walk into a room and it just feels great. I try and stay away as much as possible from negative, but I, a lot of stagnant. <laughs> what I find is a lot of stagnant, um, sometimes dead in quotation marks. I actually, probably three weeks ago, I got a call and I went and I did a consultation here in Tampa because I do them virtually too, but I was doing a local one. And this woman is a very prominent woman in, in the city and she is just beautifully, immaculately dressed, just a beautiful woman, very philanthropic. Her home is stunning. I mean, I'm talking, you know, artwork curated from art galleries all over the world. But I walked in and I'm like, it feels dead. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no life. It feels stagnant. It feels dead. And I didn't say anything yet. I normally will sit down during the consultation and I'll talk and I'll I'll get to know the person and it we'll spend maybe half an hour of the consultation just tell me what's working for you, tell me what's not. And she's like, It's beautiful, but it doesn't feel I'm like alive. What? <laughs> like, yeah. And then come to find out her husband had passed two years before. And this was a transition time for her. Her children are grown and flown. And her house reflected that loss. You know, and so if we talked through it, then we walked through the house and we kind of came up with suggestions in each area of the Bagua and which is, I'll show you guys what a Bagua map is and the type of feng shui, because there's also multiple types of feng shui. Everything I'm saying is of the BGB school of feng shui, Western feng shui. Um, we work with a Bagua map, where was that? So you guys can see it. And basically what we do is we divide a home into nine energy centers, which are the nine main areas of your life. So we just kind of walked around to the different areas of her home and found ways to bring life in because I didn't need to move anything. It was gorgeous. You know, I could not have done a better job. Whoever did it did an amazing job on this house. So I was not there to rearrange furniture. I was there to somehow pump life and energy back into the home. And so we came up with ideas for each area and uh, she's working on it. I check in on her about once a week and she's like, I worked on this area, I'm working on this area. And she said she feels so much better. So that's the whole point. You know, that so, is amazing. So, yeah, it it does. I mean, I've got some stories that are crazy. Some take a little longer and are, you know, a little bit more step by step. And some are so dramatic. You're like, oh my gosh, you know, one person came off of oxygen in two weeks just from moving a painting of water from over his head, you know, because you have to look at everything. Yeah. If you want, I'll share that one. It's very quick. Yes, so, please, please. I love I these was, stories. I was, I, I, they're so fun. I'm telling you, uh, we could be here all night. Um, I was sold by an older couple and normally, you know, I don't get very many calls from 80 plus year olds. So I got a call. I went to their house, the sweetest little couple you've ever met. Um, the wife was speaking more for the husband cause you could tell he was hard. You know, he had a hard time breathing and she said he had been in an accident and he was having a very hard time at night. So he was on an oxygen machine. And he said he felt like he was drowning and he was, you know, drowning all night long. So he had the oxygen. She had to move out of the bedroom and move into another bedroom because that kept her up all night. You know, his getting up and being restless and on the machine. So I just said, may I see your bedroom? We walked back to the bedroom. And again, a very well-to-do couple. They had a gorgeous oil painting of Venice over their bed. And um, I said what is what about this what can you tell me about this oh we bought it we're in venice we loved it it means a lot to us and like guys where can human beings not breathe and they need oxygen in order to breathe underwater 
they're sleeping under water, under a, a picture of a Venice canal with a gondola. They're literally <laughs> sleeping underwater every night. And because he's an older gentleman, also naps. So, mm -hmm. then, you know, five, six, seven hours. I mean, it was probably eight to 10 hours a day under. And then I'm sure since he was tired and couldn't sleep at night, he'd so he was constantly underwater, mm -hmm. you know? So I'm like, well, let me move it. And at first they were hesitant because they're like, oh, well, this is very expensive. I'm like, I'm not saying to get rid of it. I'm just saying, let's move it out of the bedroom. Let me find another spot. So this time I did physically remove something and move it to another space. And just let me see what happens. I had another consultation in that general area about two weeks later. So I said, can I drop in and just check in on you guys? I've got about 15 minutes. They said, sure. He was outside in the front yard playing with his granddaughter. He was almost off the oxygen completely. And she said he has his life back. So some are as dramatic as that. They're not all like that. That was a great one. Even I was taken back by that in the short amount of time. But that's how much your surroundings can affect you. You know, it's just, it just is, <laughs> you know, it just is. And when they affect you to that level, they can be hurting you in ways that you didn't know. So, you know, my job as a consultant is to come in and kind of be a detective and be like, mm -hmm what's happening? Like, what, what am I, and I'm also highly empathic, I'm, you know, clairsentient. I mean, I just, I'm all the feels. So, you know, I can walk into space and take it all in. Sometimes it's too much for me too, but, uh, um, you know, I do my best to go in there and, and just make it what is most beneficial to the client, you know, what they need and listen to the words that they're using. He was using, I feel like I'm drowning, I feel like I'm underwater and you walk in there and there it is. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I love it how these changes are also simple changes. They're not. Right. Like it doesn't all have to be. Yeah. We chose, my husband and I chose. I mean, and our son at that point graduated from college. So we would do kind of a refresh from the family home to like the empty nester home. Mm -hmm. So the timing was great for us to change as much as we changed. But it doesn't have to be that way. You know, I mean, we moved one painting and made all the difference in this person's mm -hmm. life. That's it. I removed nothing from this other client and she's bringing in fresh flowers and fresh plants to add some life to her. Mm -hmm. She didn't have one fresh plant or flower in her house. You feel it when mm -hmm. walked in, you know? Wow. So it's sometimes they're that simple. They, they don't need to be these huge overhauls that scare people and they don't even want to start because they're, they're paralyzed as to where do I begin? So then what are like some small things that you can do to offset um, or the negative energy and introducing more positive energy? To me, the, my, my favorite go-to always, always, always. And the first thing I always will tell everybody is fresh flowers, mm -hmm. you know, and it doesn't have to be super expensive. I've done this since my twenties without knowing feng shui. I just love having, you know, the little bouquet. It doesn't have to be $50 every week. I mean, mm -hmm. it can be whatever Whole Foods or whatever your grocery store has. It's the act of intentionally bringing something that's live mm -hmm. into your home. Not only are they beautiful, but all flowers are wood energy. And wood energy is very mm -hmm. yang energy, mm -hmm. which translates to growth. Mm -hmm. So they just bring in happiness, growth, you know, pick the colors for the season. Pick the color for the room you're in. You know, if you want to attract money, bring in a purple orchid into your wealth corner, which in feng shui would be the back left-hand corner of your house. You know, for romance, bring beautiful roses into your love and romance. You know, overall, overall, just a super happy chi enhancer in the center of your home. Bring some sunflowers. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. It doesn't have to be over the top. And then you'll find once you make one small change, it usually leads to you wanting to do something else, do something else, <laughs> do something else until you go down the rabbit hole and do what I'm doing now. <laughs> you know? But I love it. I love it. I enjoy it. And I do everything so intentionally. And that is what makes it work. You know, I do it with very specific intentions for what I'm doing. I am bringing these flowers in for X, Y, Z, you know, um, another great place to, to start to just kind of shake up everything is the front door. So again, we can talk about this all night. And if you do everything inside your house, but your front door is a hot mess, then that chi, that life force, that energy that we want to bring into the space has nowhere to go. So if you think of the front door, the front door is like our mouth. So we are taking air, we eat, our nutrition, everything that we need to survive basically has to come in through our mouth. Our home's front door 
is the home's mouth. Mm -hmm. That is the, the mouth of chi is what we all call it in feng shui. So before you even go in, start out there if you want to, you know, go buy some flowers, put them inside and then go right back outside. Make sure you've got a fresh doormat. Something mm -hmm. I always share with my clients is don't have it have your name on it. Mm -hmm. In feng shui, energy is everything, right? So if you don't have your name with your initial, I used to do this too. I had it with our initial and I never even thought about it until I started starting for my certification. I'm like, that makes so much sense. Every time somebody comes in or out, they're stepping on your name. Just step up. Yeah. And I'm like, I never thought of that. Uh, so just try and have one without initials or monograms or anything like that or your name. You know, if you want the ones that say hello or happy fall, whatever, that's all fine. Um, make sure the lights work. Make sure they're not burnt out. When people tell me I feel so burnt out, I'm exhausted. I start at their front door. Let's go see. Are these light bulbs burnt out? You know, I'm stuck. Every time I hear I'm stuck, I'm stuck in my career. In our feng shui, the bagua usually lines up with the career area. This is usually your front door. Every once in a while, I get a front door here or here, but 95% of the time, your front door is going to line up with your career. So if somebody's called me because they're stuck, they're stuck in a career that they don't want. They're stuck trying to figure out what career they want. They're stuck not getting recognition for what they're doing. I go right to that front door. And if I press on that front door and it doesn't open and close easily, then that tells me you're stuck. That's the mm -hmm. stuck. So make sure that it's in really good working order, that the door isn't stuck, you know, that it's not swelled up and stuck, that it's in really good working condition, that everything is bright and shiny and clean and beautiful. Great new doormat, fall flowers right now, pumpkins outside, you know, just, just anything to say, hey, look at me. You know, and then that brings the energy inside. I love it. I love it. And clean, sweep, and sweep, clean. sweep, sweep, and sweep some more. Keep it clean. <laughs> so you also mentioned a little bit, well, we mentioned about flowers, but there are also plants. Um, and what's the difference between these high vibe versus low vibe plants that you can so, use? High vibe plants to me are plants. To me, it's almost any plant that you like. Um, Feng shui consultants go back and forth on cactus and cacti as low vibing plants because they're so spiny. Mm -hmm. However, I, for many, for several years, actually, we just sold it and moved back to Tampa where we are now. But for, for several years, it's actually where I wrote the book, had a home in Sedona, Arizona, which is yeah. a very magical. Um, yeah, that was a message too. One day I got a message, you need to buy a home in Sedona, my poor husband. He's amazing. So I go to my husband. <laughs> we happen to go to this place called Sedona, Arizona. He goes, where's that? I'm like, I don't know. We have to find it. We found it. I'm like, I'm supposed to go there and buy a house. And he's like, okay. So we flew there and we got a house. And it was our second home for a while. And then during the pandemic, we moved there. And that's when I wrote the book. So see, it just, you know, one thing leads to another. You listen to one thing because your environment is there to help you. And it goes on. So back to the plants. I fell in love with cactus out there. Absolutely freaking in love with them. And they're everywhere. So, of course, when I first got there and I'm trying to feng shui the house, I'm in a panic because the entire yard is full of cactus. So I called my teacher and I'm like, um, you know, this is all supposedly a no-no. She's like, no, it's not. First of all, if you love it, it's fine. There are some areas where it may not be as beneficial to have the spiky, um, maybe the love and romance and the family mm -hmm. areas, because then that could lead to prickly relationships, you know, mm -hmm. if you translate it that way. But certainly, like in the fire, if you love them and you have to have them, this is a fire element area, which is your fame and reputation, which doesn't mean you're looking to be famous. It could, but it doesn't mean that. But it means it's how others see you. And since that's a fire element, that is a fiery, you know, cactus or fiery plants. That could be a place where you put them if you love them. So again, like your office, another, if your office falls in this area. You know, I wouldn't like my office actually falls in helpful people. I am where am I right here? I am down here in my house where we are right now. So I wouldn't put it in here. You know, this is a metal element. It's more yin. It's soft. It's quiet. The color is gray, which is why all my shawl beings gray, you know, so you can work with it many different ways. But in this area of your home, if you must have a cactus inside, that would be where I would put it. Any other low vibe plant would be plants that are in bad shape that are dead, that need to be pruned, you know, because again, they bring the energy down, they're sucking energy down. So high vibe plants are 
all the other plants. Anything that you love that makes you happy, that's in great health. You know, plants are protectors. Ferns outside your house are kind of like the feng shui dogs of the plant world. Um, you know, orchids bring in so much beauty. You you can have so many different ways of working with plants. And there's a ton of posts on plants on my Instagram because I am a plant mama. I just watered all my indoor plants today and it literally took 45 minutes because I'm, I'm kind of a plant mama these days. I love them. I have them everywhere and they make me happy, but I am constantly deadheading them and checking them to make sure that they're in good shape. I have a fiddle leaf fig that wasn't doing so well. So outside he went, you know, just hang out for a few days and see, you know, you want to keep those plants in great shape so they can work for you, you know, as chi lifters, as chi enhancers and air purifiers and to give them the chance to do all the good things that they can do. I was just going to say they're also air purifiers. Absolutely. The positive vibe. Yes, absolutely. No, they, they do real work in your home. You know, I, I mean, I don't think you can, I guess you can have too many. The only place I would say that I would minimize the plants would be your bedroom because again, plants are yang energy. And if you are someone, and again, there's always a big if, right? I don't come in and fix something if it's not broken. If you have problems sleeping and you have a ton of plants in your bedroom, perhaps removing some of them for a couple of nights and seeing if you sleep better, you know, that's something you can try. If it doesn't make a difference and you love having them in there, have them in there. If it's not a problem at all, it's not a problem, you know? But that—that that is that is one thing that they can do is like overstimulate you at night. Makes sense. So you mentioned about mm-hmm. like a few things. First thing we can do is like uh, bring fresh flowers and also yes. check out your front door. Uh, if yes. somebody decided they're going to like start doing feng shui tomorrow, what are other things like or the first things besides these two you would suggest them to do? So once you've done your front door so that you can allow that fresh energy in, I would say, again, this depends because I always find I always ask like my clients, well, what's the biggest issue, right? What's, what's, um, what's going on in your life? If it's a health related issue, then I would start in the center of your home because the center is the health area of the Bagua map. And if you notice, this touches everything else. Mm -hmm. So that could be one thing. If somebody comes to me with love and relationship questions, then I suggest we start at the master bedroom. Now, even though the love and romance corner is up here in the Bagua map, Wherever your master bedroom is, you're going to treat it as such, you know? And if your master bedroom is in good shape, I started at my master bedroom when I did my house. Um, If that's in good shape, if the energy's there, uh, if your relationship is benefiting from all that, then a lot of these other ones are also going to benefit from that, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, That's usually what do people come to me for? So it's health, wealth, finances, you know? So again, if finances are an issue and you're looking to, make more money, not just cover your bills. Like the family area would be like, you just need to cover your bills. Your wealth quarter would be like, I want extra money to go on that trip. You know, that kind of wealth. Then we can look at that area and and see. However, it's always a what, uh, however, what do you need in order to bring in wealth? Well, you need skills and knowledge. You need health. If you're not in good health, it's hard to work to bring in wealth. If you don't know what you're talking about, it's hard to of that. You know, if your career area and your career is stagnant and not moving, it's hard to bring in that wealth. So as you can see, it's all so interrelated. It's all. But, you know, I always suggest start small, start with one little area. You can use the Bagua on your entire home. You can use it within a room. You can use it on your desk. You know, you can just feng shui your desk according to the Bagua. So it doesn't, again, have to be this huge, overwhelming thing. You can just do bite-sized bits. I'd suggest finish one area and then go to the next and then go to the next. Like, don't halfway start the whole house because you'll probably never get to it all. That's kind of how I did it. I did one area. We did our master bedroom. Big difference here. This is good. Honey's happy. Let's go do another room, you know? And then we went to the room that she noticed in our house was kind of dead for us and stagnant. And... And I, and I said, it's true. I never come in here. She goes, why? I'm like, well, that's interesting because my parents had passed and I inherited a whole bunch of their stuff, beautiful items. They weren't me. I kind of used them all in that room and I never went in there. And mm-hmm. she said, you know what? I'm giving you permission to release those items. Would your mom want you 
to never walk in here and be in this part of your house, which is a big part of our house, the dining area, and because it doesn't feel good to you. And I'm like, you know, so many of us keep so many things out of guilt. So okay. to all of you guys watching right now, um, I'm going to do for you what my teacher did for me. And I release you from that guilt and I give you permission to let go of things that no longer serve the life that you want moving forward. Because think about it. What, I, what can I do to illustrate really quickly? So if your hands are totally full, you see me, if your hands are full, they're stacked full of stuff and somebody hands you whatever it is you've most been wanting, money, travel, trips, a purse, shoes, whatever it is for you. Um, if somebody's handing that to you and your hands are full, you can't take it. You can't take it. You cannot accept it. The only way to accept it is if you have space. So we did that room next and it was hard. It was not easy to necessarily just give away my parents' things. I found people who loved them. I donated, I gifted. Um, anything that was broken, I threw away. You don't want to keep things that are broken. Broken mm -hmm. equals broke. So back to the well. And by the end, I kept one or two things that belonged. I have my dad's pipe. He smoked like a tobacco pipe. I have that and it's small. It's here in my office with me because this is my helpful people. And I think of them as my helpful people, you know, and I have some jewelry that belonged to my mom and that's it, you know, and everything in our home reflects us, not mm -hmm. them. And it made all the difference in the world. And you know, a lot of feng shui revolves around being able to let go of those things that no longer serve you. And it's hard, you know, decluttering and getting rid of things that you have out of guilt or obligation or gifts or whatever the thing is, it, it's not easy. Um, and sometimes it takes a little while, you know, but you can do it and it'll make all the difference. It really will. I love this. I, I just absolutely told you we can keep going forever. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you mentioned like each time you do consultation, you first, you know, really ask the clients their life and their health and all these aspects. So what is a consultation with you look like? So when I do one on ones, um, I'm not doing groups or anything yet. As of now, I find that I work best individually. So when I do one on ones, whether they're virtual or in person, Again, the first half hour, a good half hour, especially if it's virtual because I'm not in your space, mm -hmm. you know, we'll be just about talking and, and, you know, it'll be about what is working for you? What is not working for you? You know, what would you like to see more of, you know, and that's what we want to call in, you know, and for everyone, it's very different for some people who have these incredible homes. It's certainly not about wealth, but it's mm -hmm. about health and mm -hmm. life you know, and calling in friends and, you know, that kind of thing. For others, it was completely about health for the older gentleman. For me, it was about letting go and giving me the space in my home to then allow all these other wonderful things that have manifested for me to come in. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I guarantee that none of this would have happened if I didn't function my house. For me, it was like the gateway drug. You know, I started functioning. And suddenly it turns into books and deaths and interviews and all this stuff. I'm like, whoa, you know, <laughs> I don't know how this all happened, but it started by my being open enough to want to make a change in my environment, you know, and, and that you just have to be ready. Now I want to talk about your book. So tell us sure. about what should I feng shui today and well, I can't help that... others. So the book is not what I should feng shui today. Oh, the what should I feng shui today is the card deck. Is the card, believe it or not. Yes. So the card deck is 77 cards. I showed you guys the bottom of the map. Um, but the rest of the cards, and it's explained, like you have explanations for everything. It's kind of bite size of what we've been talking about today. I haven't looked at any of these cards. I'll just pull one out. Oh my goodness. This is the synchronicity of the universe and I love it so much. I'm going to show you guys this card and then I'll read it. Let go. Let go of at least one item kept out of obligation. Items that no longer serve the life you want to lead create energy which keeps you from moving forward. Keeping, I can't read, I need my glasses. Keeping these items creates static and negative energy. How about that? And I literally just pulled from the middle of the deck. But this is what happens now. So they're all bite-sized cards like this. And, you know, today 
add the traditional cure of a weighted object to a room if you live in a high rise and feel ungrounded. And we have a lot of high rises here in Florida. So people will call me and just say, I just feel really ungrounded. So, you know, there's so many different things you can do. So by the end of the card deck, if you do all 77 tips and tricks and props, um, you will have touched your entire hole, even your barter, if you have one. You know, you will literally have touched everything inside and out of your surroundings, your garage, your attic, everything, so that you can basically be me. You know, there's, you know, if you don't want to do a one on one and you just want to go for it yourself, this is the way to do it. You can certainly start there. Um, so that's my deck. And again, I channeled this in probably two and a half to three weeks while I was still. I got COVID last year. 21 in December and then COVID turned into shingles on this entire side of my face and I could not leave the house for weeks. I'm still, I still have issues all right here and there's still a lot of nerve pain. It's really wild. The shingles are no fun, but I couldn't leave the house. I literally looked like this side of my face had melted and I was still, and while I was still and frustrated and in pain and angry, I meditated. And as I meditated, all of a sudden I started writing and I got told to create this deck and I'm like, okay. So I wrote it all down. I talked to my husband he's like, okay. <laughs> and I knew a beautiful artist in Sedona that um, is a friend of mine. And I just called and said, Hey, do you want to create this together? And nothing like this exists. You know, there's a lot of feng shui books that are beautiful books. And my teacher has a beautiful book. So I did not want to go into the books because mm -hmm. they already had their space. And that was not what I was told to do. I was told to create cards. So I'm like, okay. And lo and behold, the deck was born. I'm like, here we go. So <laughs> when you are still, when you are open, when you listen and when your surroundings support you, you know, ask me three years ago and I'd be like, I don't have any interest in creating products. Why would I want to do that? <laughs> you know? And here we are. So I can see so many people can benefit from a stack, like, because book can be like a dentist for people, but this is like literally really practical tips you can just do. Yes. And some of the books out there are fantastic. Please don't get me wrong. I don't want to take away from any. I have a whole bunch of my peers and my teachers books. They're amazing. I was just called to do something different. So I did, you know, and then my book, can you read that? Yep. I just can't make this shit up. <laughs> that is actually, and we've touched a little bit about it here, but that is about my journey, my spiritual journey over the last five years and how all of these things unfolded. Um, and things that had happened to me since childhood that I never knew how to connect the dots. Once I started down this journey, once I truly feng shuied my home and then kind of lived in that envelope you know and that little respite and oasis of my home all of these things started connecting the dots and I was led from one healer to another healer who helped me uncover things and it turned into a best-selling book on Amazon <laughs> actually my book launch is here in Tampa on October 17th so the official the official book launch I wanted to wait until we got into our home and I felt more grounded because I was feeling very ungrounded. I didn't want to uh, to really do too much about this until I was in that space. And so we've been in about a month and uh, like, okay, we can have some fun with this now. But yeah, it kind of is, has a life of its own. And I get messages from people all over the world who are reading it. Guys, I'm always shocked <laughs> when men are reading it. I'm always, always blown away. I mean, I'm very grateful to them. But you know, Guys, that I would never think are reaching out, and my husband's friends. We were going to a party a couple of weeks ago, and one of and my husband gets a text from a friend of his that we haven't seen in probably ten years. Hey, tell your wife I just finished reading her book. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm still very overwhelmed, very grateful, and very curious to know what's next because I don't think this is the end. I think that being in this space and being open and curious and and willing to make the space to invite new things in is going to be really interesting moving forward. It's huge. <laughs> it's huge. It is. It is. But you first need to make the space. Step one. So uh, people can get the, I know people can get the book on Amazon. So what about the, the cart deck? Um, it's going to be on Amazon soon. Right now you can just go to my website and order it directly from us on the website. 
but we are working. My assistant is working on getting it up on Amazon. There's a lot of hoops to getting things on Amazon. It takes a minute, um, which is all fine. I don't have a problem with it. But right now it's, it's just through my website. Or if you go to my Instagram, that'll link you to the link tree, which will link you to go shop at the website. So it's pretty simple. It's a one or two click thing and you'll be fine. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Wow. Thank you so much for this. Oh, oh my God. So, hey, I need to get the Do you have any other questions for me? No question, but I feel like I know we're like running over time. We're going to have to invite you back to tell more stories. Oh, I love it. The stories. Oh, I love it. It's just we amazing. We can do feng shui and crystals and feng shui and health. I mean, there's so many directions to work on this with. Yeah, that would be so cool because we have a community. We have a lot of people following us who are experiencing fertility struggles. And that's like, I think that's a pretty huge item. That we yes, talk about. I, I will That's show fine. you really quickly where what area of the Bagua map people can go to. So what area of their home, if people are struggling with infertility, which I did too, I had four, four miscarriages. Um, we have one child who's 27, who is the love of our life, but the four after him were all miscarriages. So I struggled with that as well and did a lot of chemicals to try and have a child. And it just wasn't feasible for us, but I understand that very deeply and very personally. So in your Bagua map, you go to the children and creativity corner. So if you're walking in your front door to the right and the center is that area. So just take a look at that area of your home for those of you who are struggling with this and see if anything is literally blocked. Unblock mm -hmm. it, add some white, add some metal elements um, and certainly reach out to me if, if you want to get more in depth in that area. But those are just a few things that you can quickly go look at and see if it may help. You know, I mean, maybe unblocking something will unblock something. You never know. Amazing. So thank you so much. You're so welcome. This and then fun. thank you everyone for joining. I could be sure to follow Alejandra at Alejandra G. Brady uh, Lifestyle. And then we're going to have all the information in, um, in a, underneath the post promoting this Instagram live. So thank you so much. Thank you. I thank you guys for what you guys are doing because it's, it's a big deal to keep it clean in our world. It's hard. It's hard. It's but we need so thank you. them energy all around and then people have to be open-minded to accept yes. all the new stuff. Yes. Yes. Very much so. I think more people are slowly starting to come around, but as long as we keep getting these messages out, we'll get there. Absolutely. Talk to you soon. Thank, thank you. Bye. Bye.